Welcome back to a brand new Creative Encounter podcast episode. I'm your host, Juet Z. Payne, and you are back for episode 56 of this podcast. Welcome. If this is your first time, please go ahead and subscribe on YouTube. Follow us. Go ahead and leave a like and a rating and a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all of that good stuff so we can reach so many more kingdom creatives. And lastly, remember, we are a nonprofit Creative Encounter podcast and Juet Z. Payne Music nonprofit. So if you want to support this ministry, I would absolutely love that. And all donations are tax deductible. But without further ado, I am here with an amazing friend of mine, and this is a very special episode for me because it's been a year yeah. since we connected. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we did this awesome event last year. This is my great friend. She is a dancer and a campus minister, Sarah Baker. Sarah, yeah, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for of having course. me, Juet. Yeah. So happy to be with you all today. Yes. So yeah, very exciting. Man, so good to see you. Okay, so literally, guys, it has been about a year since we did Sat in a Boat. Yeah. This awesome production that we did last year. And it actually also is a year since the last creative encounter in person event. So, mm-hmm. Set in a Boat kind of wrapped up our in person events for uh, Creative Encounter. And now yeah. we just focus on the podcast component of Creative Encounter and some future things coming, but right now just the podcast, right? So, how has it been since Set in a Boat? Yeah, it's been great. I yeah. can't believe that was a year ago. It's been, a year, yeah. it's been so fun to just even reminisce about that time. Yeah. And we did Sat and Boat again mm-hmm. for Creative Encounters, but yeah. like our show sold mm-hmm. out last yes. year when we did it. And so I was like, was that in October or November? I think October. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, so, it was October when I came to that show. Yeah. And that's when I sat there. I was with my wife. I was like, yo, we have to ask them if they can do this again because mm-hmm. it's just such a beautiful. Uh, representation of the gospel mm-hmm. it's like so good but yeah yeah so yeah. so yeah things have been going crazy. well yeah mm-hmm. i love it good okay so you have been now you were a part of that production as a dancer yes but then i love at the end uh you wrapped it up by bringing the gospel mm-hmm. and i saw you do that at each one of the shows mm-hmm. and i love that so uh, tell me now i think that kind of ties in both of the things that you do like your campus minister mm-hmm. and then you also you know dance so we can start with the creative side first um how did you get into dance like how, what's like your fondest inception memories yeah <laughs> you know? great question so yeah. i started dancing when i was three years old wow. uh you know just something i'm the yeah. oldest yeah. of seven and wow. so you know yeah. first first baby girl mom's like let's put her in dance okay. and so and i just always loved it like yeah. i did sports like mm-hmm. all throughout like yeah. what sports was, did you do oh my gosh yeah. i was like again like the oldest child so like try yeah. out everything yeah, and yeah. so but i played yeah. Volleyball, basketball, and softball up till yeah. high school, and yeah, then nice. I played JV volleyball. But oh, wow. the whole time, it was just mm-hmm. like, Mom will do whatever you want me to do as long yeah. as I can keep dancing, wow. and I Love just um, never stopped. Yeah. And um, when I was going into high school, mm-hmm. you know, my parents were like, what do you want to do yeah. like, when you get older? And just helping me kind of navigate college mm-hmm. and future decisions yeah. and I was kind of between a dancer mm-hmm. or uh, an ophthalmologist a, wow. an eye doctor yeah. and so my mom was kind of like okay well if you really want to dance like we yeah. gotta get you out there in the real world yeah. and I come from a very small town I graduated yeah. with less than like 50 kids in my class wow. um, I actually that's grew up crazy. on a dairy farm no way yeah <laughs> that's crazy in Michigan yeah. and so, so did you guys have like um like animals around while yeah we had like 400 cows outside my back really? door mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. i was just kidding i yeah. love it yeah so <laughs> like when awesome. i go like home to michigan it's it's the michigan. dairy okay, farm i was gonna ask you mm-hmm. which state wow yeah, no michigan. Way. yeah so you've milked a cow you've done all of that stuff yes yeah oh, so i'm not like as hardcore as like my so brothers more, yeah. and stuff but um very very <laughs> thankful for my That's upbringing so cool. but yeah. you know it's um so when you talk about being a professional mm-hmm. dancer, it's yeah. kind of like there's not too many opportunities right, in my hometown. Sense, yeah. So when I was going into high school, mm-hmm. my mom and I flew out to L.A. Wow. and did an audition for this touring company called Tremaine Dance Convention. So mm-hmm. I would go mm-hmm. uh, to the different conventions and mm-hmm. help assist during master classes oh. and work the conventions. Wow. And that was kind of like my mom's like sink or swim moment. Yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. either you're going to do this or not. But, but even, her, got in. even her taking that chance on you yeah it just says so much it just says about just like how like she supports she's you know, your family just supported you in mm-hmm. that but then also you had something for her to even go to that place to do that for you you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying so it's like yeah. she saw something in you for you to be able to do that that's so special yeah I love yeah no so way. super thankful yeah, yeah. I have love love my family and yeah. praise god for them mm-hmm. and so super supportive and yeah so then when i yeah 
was applying to school. Mm. Um, I went to Chapman University in California. Okay. And so I thought I was going to do like the L.A. Mm-hmm. scene. Yeah. And so I was kind of like, again, well, if yeah. I'm going to move out of Michigan, yeah. like L.A. or New York mm-hmm. are the major hubs for dance. And mm-hmm. so I was like, let me give my shot at L.A. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I studied BFA in dance yeah. and also have a degree in business, wow. too. Yeah. You know, yeah. back up, like security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> yes, parents, I will do that. Yeah, um, yeah and try to make the LA thing work yeah. but I really fell in love with modern contemporary dance mm-hmm. my second half of college okay. and so through that you know auditioned for companies mm-hmm. after graduation and got a performing apprentice job here uh-huh. in Chicago so that's okay. really what brought me to the city Ooh. so and then your family is still over in Michigan mm-hmm. wow so yeah. are you the, like the only one here kind of as far yep. as your family is concerned here in Chicago yeah wow mm-hmm. that's yeah. awesome yeah. that's crazy so, so you're working at a company now that focuses on dance, even even today? No, so I actually am no longer with that company. So okay. I danced with them for four and a half years. Mm-hmm. And then when I was pursuing ministry, mm-hmm. I felt like Lord was saying, okay, mm-hmm. it's time mm-hmm. to like leave this yeah. in order to pursue ministry yeah. fully. But it's interesting uh-huh. because you didn't necessarily leave it. Right. Yeah, they, they it just fused, I feel. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So how yeah. so how is that season? Because that can be hard when you're doing oh something my. your whole life. Yeah. And then God I mean, you see it all through scripture. Mm-hmm. All of the patriarchs of faith. You just see all of them of just yeah. like how God calls them, like they're just comfortable doing their thing and he just comes out of nowhere, yo, I need you to go over here. Right. You're like, snap. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So how how was that with you? Um, you know, mentally, emotionally, all of that creatively. Yeah. It was a lot. So yeah. when I first uh, answer the call ministry, mm-hmm. you know, I interned with the church for two years. Okay. And so, because when I first moved to Chicago, you know, you're doing, doing the hustle. I'm like teaching dance. I'm in the company. I have a marketing yeah. job. Mm-hmm. And then after two years, I felt like I was calling me to ministry mm-hmm. and just loved every minute of it. I was super yeah. involved in my church, like seeing people mm-hmm. really changed by yeah. Jesus. Yes. I was like, I just want to do this full time. Yeah, wow. And so I went on a missions trip. Wow. Yes. And that's when... Where'd you go? Uh, Luxembourg, Luxembourg, which is a very small country mm-hmm. in Europe. And so, yeah. and we were just talking to people about mm-hmm. about Jesus and evidence for God. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure I drove my pastors crazy because mm-hmm. like every day I'd have like a million and two questions into yes. town. Then we talked to people all day yeah, and then a million go. and two questions home. Yeah. And so, and that's when I said, okay, I think I'm going to pray mm-hmm. about pursuing full-time ministry. Yes. And so at that time I moved out of my marketing job, mm-hmm. but was still in the dance company. Okay. And so... I did that for about, that was about a two-year process. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the two years, um, you know, it was time, time was coming for my contract to Mm -hmm. come back up for Mm -hmm. the dance company Mm -hmm. in March. And so about January, I just like did not feel at peace about Mm -hmm. signing it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know why, because it's kind of like, you know, you're, I'm in the peak of my career, you know, it's like, this is, this is my time to really like own it. And, but I just like didn't feel peace. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, prayed about it for mm-hmm. two months. I like mm-hmm. never want to live those two months again because yeah. it was like very tumultuous well, yeah. um, for me. And um, yeah, and you know, got wise counsel mm-hmm. and really was just, like, you know, staying before the Lord in my yeah. Bible and sin. Mm-hmm. And one thing that really helped in um, Hebrews, it talks about let mm-hmm. us throw off every weight and sin mm-hmm. that so easily yeah. hinders and Hinders's run with yeah. perseverance, yeah. the race marked out for mm-hmm. us. And so I felt like the Lord was saying, the company is not a sin, but it's a weight. Mm-hmm. And so I'm asking you to like lay this down. Wow. And so um, that's what I did and not really knowing exactly mm-hmm. how dance was going to come back yeah. into my life. Yeah. And God's just been so faithful. And I think even like through Sat in the Boat, it, mm-hmm. it's just like so sweet mm-hmm. that I'm still able to dance yes. and have outlets to dance. Wow. Um, not like I deserve it, but like God's just so cool. And mm-hmm. now we have a dance ministry, a part of our church. That's yes. how I know Rebecca yeah. in Sat in the Boat and some of the other performers. Do you two fellowship at the same church? Um, yes. Yeah. yeah Rebecca yeah. and I, and, um, another one of the performers, Elijah. Yeah. Yeah, Elijah so yeah, yeah, Elijah and I go way back to yeah. Chapman days. And no so way. it's just yeah. cool to see how God like brings people Probably together. Whatever. And even if you, you know, disconnect yeah. for a while, he mm-hmm. brings them back. And so, so yeah, it's been really yeah. sweet just to, even though I'm not with the company anymore to mm-hmm. see how I still have that outlet mm-hmm. for dance and I still have such a heart for the dance 
industry Mm -hmm. and for dancers to Mm -hmm. know the gospel, to know Jesus. And so it's just been amazing to see what he's been doing. Wow. Mm -hmm. I love that. And even just that story is so encouraging because the word just tells us even when when we relent to him, he still, he gives us the desires of our heart, Mm -hmm. you know? So with that, uh, that could be something you just really, truly desire and, you know, dance and whatnot. And God's like, I need you over here. But he doesn't forget about us on a personal level. Mm-hmm. He still knows the desires of our hearts. He knows the things that excite us. And so, so he doesn't just dismiss that. He's not a dismissive God in that mm-hmm. sense. You know, he'll still be able to uh, intertwine those things mm-hmm. and then still bring glory to his name. He just wants to see sometimes, like, are you going to be obedient? Right. You know, to the call, right. to what I'm calling you to do. Right. You know, I'll take care of you being satisfied, you know, you know, the scriptures say that he satisfies us, you yep. know? So even with that, it's just, that's so special just seeing mm-hmm. him still putting that together, you know? Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. So then, okay, so with that, what you going into ministry, because I want to talk about this new ministry, you mm-hmm. know, that you guys are launching and whatnot. But with that, when you were um, asked to be a part of Sat in a Boat, was that the first time you got back into dance with it? Or did you start, because I know you guys started a dance ministry at the church. Mm-hmm. Was that started before or was that the boat introduced first? Yeah, so we started the dance ministry before Sat in the Boat, mm-hmm. um, before the pandemic. I'm mm-hmm. trying to think exactly. It was probably 2019 yeah. we started it. And so then Rebecca started coming in mm-hmm. to Second City. So we got connected through that. Yeah. And we did a show called Revelation 22, oh, nice. the Easter before yeah. Sat in a Boat. And yeah. so we had already worked together. Mm-hmm. And so that was great to build relationally mm-hmm. and just be missional, kingdom-minded. Mm-hmm. And so then we had that like trust when it yeah. went into Sat in a Boat. Mm-hmm. And even after that, we did another Easter show through dance ministry mm-hmm. called Clothed. And so that was last mm-hmm. April mm-hmm. where I also did, yeah, the gospel presentation. Well, yeah. um, again, different, that, that, but same that's, that's, message. That's, that, that's, that's my thing. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it's it. not, not necessarily yeah. my, like, it takes me a lot of effort mm-hmm. and work. Yeah. Um, and I'm like always super nervous about oh, it. No yeah, totally. But yeah. God, like, totally like uses it and he always does what he needs to do it's like okay lord this i'm freaking out but you're gonna have to do your thing yeah Yeah. so um yeah and so that's kind of the progression and so we still have dance ministry part of the church Mm -hmm. and again it's just wild how it's just Mm -hmm. kind of funny at this point because i'll come in church and i'm new people and you know dancers are kind of usually easy to spot like you just can't tell I'm like <laughs> yeah. i think you're a dancer yeah. and so i'm like man so we have like a couple girls that mm-hmm. dance with joffrey that are part of our church mm-hmm. and like getting involved in the dance yeah. ministry and so and our our pastor actually received like prophetic prayer before mm-hmm. moving to chicago that mm-hmm. his church would be like full of dancers oh, wow. and so it's just so sweet That's to see crazy. yeah the dancers that have been coming. So it's kind of like comedic to me sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, you're a dancer too? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Makes, yeah, yeah, yeah it makes sense. So. And what's the name of the ministry again? It's just called Second City Church Dance Ministry. Okay, cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Second City Church. I love it. Yeah. That's so cool. Now tell me about uh, you being in campus ministry. Mm-hmm. Because, um, you know, we were just talking about how like I was a part of campus ministry yeah. at UIC, mm-hmm. uh, Chi Alpha, Chicago yeah. Chi Alpha. Love Chi Alpha. What up, y'all? <laughs> but then you so are connected with Chi Alpha too. At UIC as well. But yeah. uh, tell me what the name of your ministry is and what you know you guys are about. You know? Yeah. So the ministry I'm with is called Every Nation Campus. Mm-hmm. And so it's a part of the global family of churches called mm-hmm. Every Nation Ministries mm-hmm. that focuses on church planting, campus mm-hmm. ministry, and world missions. Yeah. And so I work very closely with our local church, mm-hmm. Second City Church, oh, yeah. which is mm-hmm. like through the dance ministry. Mm-hmm. So we are church-based campus ministry. You mm-hmm. don't have to be a part of the church to be part of the campus ministry. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be part of the campus ministry be part of the Mm -hmm. church but if you don't have a home we encourage you to keep growing in your relationship with jesus Mm -hmm. post-grad through church and and during college and so so yeah and that's you know kind of crazy too because even when i started Mm -hmm. answering the call ministry i wasn't thinking campus Mm -hmm. ministry i'm called to the dancers like dance community you know (laughs) and and i remember being on like a zoom call with these other campus ministers mm-hmm. with every nation be like guys we need to pray for campus mi- uh missionary in chicago mm-hmm. we don't have one mm-hmm. and they all just be like sarah why don't you be the campus mm-hmm. minister and you know i just 
now I'm ahead. Yeah. But in my <laughs> mind, I'm thinking, you yeah. don't know my life. Like, I'm yeah. a dancer, you yeah. know? But I eventually saw mm -hmm. just the need for yeah. campus ministers mm -hmm. and the the... Like, you know, Jesus says, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out labors to his harvest field yes. for the um, harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Mm -hmm. And so just that very formative time in mm -hmm. college and even just thinking about myself saying, man, I wish there was somebody mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I could go to yeah. to answer my question, exactly. like to help talk through yeah. some of my doubts and mm -hmm. fears and questions and yeah, I mean, I wasn't, and that's the other thing, I wasn't involved in campus ministry mm -hmm. during college because mm -hmm. I was so focused on dance. Yeah. So it's like, there were people there. Yeah. I just didn't make myself yeah. available yeah, to them. Yeah, yeah. But now it's just like, man, I just want to be that person yeah, that was super yeah. helpful mm -hmm. for me. And yeah. so it's been, yeah, I, I'm so thankful to be in campus mm -hmm. ministry and to be able to talk with students and yeah. uh, just, just sit on the other side of the table and mm -hmm. listen and help work through some of those questions they have about God and yeah. life and what am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. What's my purpose? And so it's been super sweet. And so, yeah, UIC is, mm -hmm. we, this is our first semester as a registered yeah. student org, and yeah. it's um, just so exciting and so it. thankful for Chi Alpha yeah. and other ministries mm -hmm. that have been there for so long. Yeah. And so it's just a really transformative time in people's lives. You're mm -hmm. making decisions about, you know, who you spend your time with mm -hmm. and career and finances yeah. and location. And um, also the nations are at the college campus. Yes. And That's so, it. That's it. yeah, I just love, especially yeah. at UIC, it's yeah. one of the most diverse colleges. Mm -hmm. And so, it's, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. That's so mm -hmm. great. I love it. That's so cool. Man, it's something that you you mentioned as far as being that person who is available mm -hmm. to support because I feel like that's what got me into teaching uh, because I teach music as well. And it really started from how I told you I did architecture, but it was a lot of stuff that they asked us to do in architecture wasn't a part of the curriculum and the program, mm. like different things we had to learn, like just, just the program and the software that was at, at our school, maybe other schools have it, but our school, there was not a specific class to learn AutoCAD or, you know, or Rhino mm. or these different programs that we had to mm -hmm. use, Illustrator, Photoshop, whatever. There wasn't a class just dedicated to that. You just had to kind of, this was your assignment, and all of us were working together and had oh, to learn wow. how to use these programs. It was oh, crazy. Wow. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. was, it was ridiculous. So, like, with that, I think God was using that to stir in me. I was like, man, if, if had I had um, this type of support, this would have been a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And after I graduated, um, me really focusing in on music, I just started getting this harder. Like, man, I would love to actually teach people because I know it's a lot of people who want to learn. But I feel like I'm good at breaking down things in simple steps that's comprehensive. And I was like, you know, I want to be able to, you know, invest in people. Mm -hmm. So I literally started with four students uh, in my living room a long time ago. I had my yeah. drum set set up in the living room, had a keyboard, uh, and I was doing bass, bass guitar and acoustic guitar. And then at the end, I had like a little, little ceremony, you know, a few weeks. It was so cool. Aww, yeah. Then eventually we, we went to a community center and it became a business and started yeah. that thing. Now we're virtual. We do it online now, uh, Starving Artist Courses. So all of that stuff. So uh, just how like God stirs those little moments of, uh, I guess, like lack or something that we needed. Mm -hmm. And he'll use that to be like, man, I want to use this to give it to someone else because I didn't have that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I love that you, you stepped right into that, you know? Yeah. 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 I love so that. Good. And it reminds me of the verse that says, be faithful with little and mm -hmm. God will give you much. You yes. know, you'll be faithful with much. And mm -hmm. so just being faithful in yes. the little things. Faithful. That's so and good. And so, yeah. Holy smokes. I mm -hmm. love it. That's so good. Yeah. Also, so what are you currently doing, uh, you know, as an artist, like what season are you in? Are you creating something new? Are you working alongside someone to create another project or yeah, something? You know what's going to happen? Yes, yeah. so we have a couple things in yeah. the works. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. So, Satin and Bow yeah. was made possible by DK Grant yep. in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And so, another girl who's part of our church and mm -hmm. campus ministry, Faith Von Otzigen, mm -hmm. also got that same grant nice. this year. Yeah. And so, she's putting together a project that's, that's going to premiere in June. Yeah. Um, at the Drucker Center Monotomy mm -hmm. Club in Lincoln Park. Yeah. And so I I am going to yes. be a part of okay, that. Yeah. And Rebecca's in it. No way. And yeah, it's basically so cool. the dance ministry. Yeah. And so um, super excited. <laughs> so yeah. And yeah. so, and that is uh, faith based as well. Mm -hmm. And 
yeah, just her testimony. Mm -hmm. It was actually part of her senior capstone that she didn't get to do because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And so kind of her journey of deliverance. And it's really powerful. And yeah, I'm super excited. So And and the first first showcase of this will be in June of 2024. In June. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. And then we'll be able to come. Yes, absolutely. Let's go. And I'm I'm convinced it's going to sell out. So once tickets go live, like people better get them. You text me first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We'll (laughs) spread the news. And so, yeah. yeah, so working on that. Uh And then just had a meeting yesterday with a girl, Lizzie Cohen. Mm -hmm. She is a painter. And um, she and I met, you know, I was just doing outreach and Mm -hmm. and thought she was a college student. And we just started chatting. And um, she's a painter and artist. And so she actually, our last Easter show, Mm -hmm. she came and did a live painting during Mm -hmm. the performance. And just kind of painting what she saw and what God was doing Mm -hmm. in the space. And so we are working on an event, um, work working title, but basically yeah. open hearts, like yeah. practicing worship. Yeah. And so creating an environment will, where people can authentically yeah. and honestly engage with God. So, yeah. And, and so, it's going to be a public event as well. Yep. It's going to yeah. be a public event. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be kind of a Saturday intensive mm-hmm. with visual art yeah. and dance. And so, yeah. yeah, we're still in the works, okay. but the... The hope is to help people, that thing like practice worship, Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, in it's, in art, it's important Mm -hmm. to practice your craft, you know, but how, how often do we practice worship and especially for like non-creative people, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but just like helping people like lift hands and Mm -hmm. worship, Mm -hmm. like that's, that's biblical, you know, and, or just being more free. Mm-hmm. in in worship to be mm-hmm. able to encounter God in deeper ways. Yes. And so we're I'm really excited for the event. It's gonna be wow. one of excellence. And yeah. so those are a couple things we're yeah. working on. And so, yeah. uh, a student from Columbia uh-huh. that I've been working with through the campus ministry, she's coming on board to help with that event too. So it's mm-hmm. even fun to again yeah. kind of help impart and and yeah. teach the next generation that mm-hmm. you can bring Jesus into mm-hmm. these spaces, yes. and this is yeah. one area how. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now, and now you're tying in your uh, kind of like I guess church service, dance ministry life with the campus ministry life mm-hmm. as well too. So so God keeps kind of putting all of your you know different areas of life mm-hmm. you know into one. You know, yeah. just pretty much just like the whole package of who Sarah is. He pays attention to that. He's putting all those pieces together and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm so excited for those events. So pretty much, uh, guys, we are some days away from Christmas at this point. Mm -hmm. And again, it's about a year from when we did Sat in a Boat. So what I want to do now is show some footage from Sat in a Boat. Yeah. You know, and I kind of want to actually show parts where you were, you know, bringing the gospel, you know, at the end of that as well, you know, because this is a season where we are yeah, celebrating, you know, gift giving and generosity and things like that. But the ultimate true gift is Jesus Christ. You know, he came wrapped, you know, he came wrapped in skin, you know, he's, he's a phenomenal gift of God and we want to be able to, to share that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to show some of Sat in a Boat and then I'll wrap it up after that. This piece um, created by Rebecca that we all came together to do was really an exploration of faith and reason. And faith um, is a step based on evidence. And so we wanted to present some evidence um, tonight for Jesus and the good news of the gospel. And so just like me, um, I was dead from the outside, I looked like I had it all together. But the inside, I knew if God is perfect love, perfect justice. There's no way if I see him, I would meet his standards. Um, The good news of the gospel is that God entered into history through the person of Jesus to renew the whole earth. And it begins with me and you. And when we believe in Jesus for his perfect record, his perfect life, instead of my own, to relate with God, to be the person he created me to be, then his power in his kingdom begins to work in and through my life and into the world. And so uh, this piece has a lot about storms and where you find hope. And I think, you know, within the past like three years with the pandemic and all the upheaval, so many things in our world can be shaken, no matter if that's your health, your job, your family, um, your mental health. But God's kingdom cannot be shaken. 
And so when I put God's track record besides mine, I'm surely entrusted to a good father. He's not some guy up in the clouds just you waiting to get your life together, but he wants to enter into your life. And so um, if you don't know the Lord, but you feel God is um, moving on your heart tonight, he just asks you to repent. And that is just a way of saying, God, I'm turning. I'm turning away from trying to figure out life on my own and try to do it in my own strength and be a good enough person, but instead I want to turn towards Jesus. And the moment you do that, God enters into our life and then we get to start walking through all the junk of our life, all of our brokenness. We, we have all, if God is perfect love and perfect justice, we've all fallen short of that, trying to do life our own way. But we receive Jesus as Lord, being God, being the one that calls the shots because we know it better. He enters into our hearts and then we get to go back to God and he walks us through all the crap and redeems our life from the pit and that's what he did for me and I wish we had time to hear all the testimonies of all the artists today in their journey with God. And so that is the good news of Jesus is that he comes to bring new life in us and hope of eternity. All right guys, so that was a little snippet of Set in a Boat. Phenomenal production, mm-hmm. phenomenal production. We actually have uh, the whole thing recorded, um, and we'll see if eventually, you know, we get it out for you guys to be able to see, or we may, or it may come back, and you know, they may do it again. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. but it was just awesome. I love how either way how it wraps up with you, Sarah, bringing the gospel because while we have them, while mm-hmm. we have them right there, yeah. it's a beautiful opportunity to, um, you know, put truth in their hearts and yeah. everything. And I just feel like you just do that so eloquently and so beautifully, mm-hmm. you know. And it's not Thanks. like you know. Even a whole production, it's not anything that's like in a pushy way. It's a way that just really just makes people think. And I love how the whole production is put together, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, I would love for you, you know, as we wrap this up, to just kind of uh, share with anyone that's on your heart as far as the gospel, Christmas season is related, and just as their creatives and artists, potential dancers here listening and watching, uh, anything that you just want to share uh, to yeah, bless the people? Yeah, I think when it comes to the importance of Christmas Mm -hmm. and the gospel and why we make a point to Mm -hmm. just make it plain Mm -hmm. at Satinabo or in dance ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, in Romans, it talks about Mm -hmm. how can they call on him they don't know Mm -hmm. and how can they know unless they don't hear. Mm -hmm. And so when we're sharing the gospel, it's an opportunity for people to hear and respond. And I think, you know, I was just reading this morning that they called Jesus Emmanuel, mm-hmm. God with us. Yes. And that's that's overarch of the whole yeah. Christmas story of the gospel. It's yeah. God trying to make his appeal to be mm-hmm. with humanity. And so that God became man yes. in the person of Jesus. Like that's so powerful. No mm-hmm. other God has done that. Wow. And so, and throughout history, it's God mm-hmm. making his way yes. towards us and... Yeah, it's just so beautiful. And so when we share that, it's just giving Mm -hmm. people an opportunity to respond. Um, And I love how in that Romans it says, how beautiful are the feet of those that bring the good news, which totally talks to dancers, you know? And so, yeah. And so I think it's always really important Mm -hmm. to just make it clear, like we're not putting on this show just to make ourselves look a certain way or Mm -hmm. even just for our own enjoyment. But we want people to know the living God that loves them, that came to make a a place with Mm -hmm. them, to know them intimately Mm -hmm. and I think what resonates with me in the gospel and Mm -hmm. artists is when you ask people like what do you love about dance a lot of times they say I feel free Mm -hmm. when I do it Mm -hmm. but like um, what happens when the curtain goes down Mm -hmm. you know what happens when you don't get the part you Mm -hmm. know and so but uh, in in the Bible it says Mm -hmm. you know where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom and like no one can take that joy away from Mm -hmm. us that freedom away from Mm us and so just I think the gospel mm-hmm. definitely answers like the that longing for freedom yeah. in artists. Yeah. And so and I think my encouragement to artists mm-hmm. is I've been thinking about this a lot lately yeah. and especially in artists, usually you're probably in city centers that's mm-hmm. a little more uh, where there's more opportunities mm-hmm. or spaces to create art mm-hmm. and uh, something I've been thinking about, and this was our message on yeah. Sunday too. It's from Jeremiah twenty nine seven mm-hmm. that says, "But seek the welfare of the city mm-hmm. where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare." Wow. And so, something I want to encourage artists with, mm-hmm. 
as we're going into this Christmas season and remembering mm-hmm. God is with us and how he's made an appeal constantly towards humanity is to pray for the city that yeah. he sent us mm-hmm. and the power of prayer. That's something God's been teaching me yes. a lot recently. And mm-hmm. I think it's easy, again, as as artists to do the hustle, mm-hmm. you know, like you just got to get it done. Yeah. But are we praying? Yes. Like, are we, are we praying about where God's calling us to, what to do, yeah. what not to do. Mm-hmm. And um, are we praying for the city? Are we praying for our, our company, the, mm-hmm. the, our coworkers, wow. um, so and for the benefit of, of the city? So good. You know, are we seeking to serve the city mm-hmm. and um, find its welfare? Because then it, we too will find our welfare. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's what I just want to encourage artists mm-hmm. with, even in this Christmas season mm-hmm. is how has God strategically placed you maybe in the city, maybe mm-hmm. not, or maybe you're close to a city, mm-hmm. but when you're, when you're in the city, how can you be a blessing to yeah. the city? Because that also points to Jesus yeah. and in his heart for mm-hmm. the city because mm-hmm. city holds people. Yep. And so that's, I think my encouragement uh, uh, to people yeah. Yeah, today. Hallelujah. Thank mm-hmm. you so much. Yeah. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Wow. Enjoy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So guys, like, Use your creative gift to just be impactful with where you are. Wherever you are placed and you're around people, whether it's just you and your small family or you just working and doing your creative giftings out in the city and out into the world, do it with excellence. You know, keep in mind the welfare of others. That's the key. You know, try to be do it all in excellence. It's all in excellence. Mm-hmm. And that's just showing the, the, the love of Christ is representing Christ. All of that, mm-hmm. you know? So that's so good. Sarah, thank you so much. My this has joy. Been awesome. It's been an honor to be yes. on. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. Yeah. So I want to wrap great. it up and ask you, um, you know, how can people reach you? Like, what's like the best way to reach you? I know you say you don't go on social too much. I don't, but you if know, you DM but, me, I'll get it to yeah. it eventually. <laughs> so it's at yeah. Sarah Baker Dance. Yeah. And so Sarah with an H. Um, yeah, Sarah Baker Dance. And yeah. yeah, you can find me there. And I'll definitely mm-hmm. post about the upcoming events too. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yes, mm-hmm. please do. Please yeah. do. Don't forget, we need to know about this. Guys, so Sarah's link is in the description below here on the YouTube video. So go ahead and check that out. And thank you so much for tuning in to another Creative Encounter podcast episode. Remember, we are a nonprofit. Go ahead and join our team. Become a monthly financial partner so we continue to do this. And on the Duet Z Payne music side, you guys already know, Oh Holy Night yes. is check official. It out. Yes, check it out. Go ahead and stream it. Go ahead and purchase it on Apple Music, any platform. Go ahead and check it out. Love you guys and Merry Christmas.